And welcome back to the great adventures of the Florida Powerboat Club. Uh, and this is Stu Jones along with Ryan McCoy. We are in the Pompano Beach studio and doing a fine job at recapping what I thought was an epic uh, 2023 summer tour. We covered eight poker run events over eight states and about 8,000 miles. Guys, we're here now with episode three with feature coverage of our August and our September agenda. We're down to three remaining events on the program. But before we get started, let's thank our sponsors. Our presenting sponsor for the FPC 2023 series of events is Mercury Racing, celebrating 50 years of wide open. And by these sponsors in alphabetical order, Big Thunder Marine, Blackwater Boats, Cigarette Racing Team, Concept Boats, Deep Impact Custom Boats, Fountain Power Boats, Midnight Express Boats, Nortec High Performance Boats, Performance Boat Center, SD Marine Group, Isla Morada, and by Statement Marine. And when you travel long distances, always nice to get there a day early so you can do a little sightseeing and that is exactly what we're doing here uh, in Newport Harbor. We flew into Providence, Rhode Island and drove to Fall River, Mass where the Poker Run will be headquartered, but we got one day to play. Uh, and here we are now at Newport, uh, Rhode Island and that is a popular harbor as we are about to find out. Everyone knows about Newport. They have a famous boat show here every year, uh, and it is an absolutely beautiful marina with some outstanding yachts and boats of all sizes. But most importantly, it's really a very vibrant and working harbor. Uh, all kinds of charter activity and a lot of tourism. And uh, what I was impressed the most with was just a very good selection of restaurants, all with fresh seafood. And we found one that was right out on the pier. It was called the Lobster Bar, and it was surrounded by water and boats coming and going all throughout the afternoon. Uh, what a great stopover for our first day of playing around in Newport, Rhode Island. And fast forward to the next morning, uh, and it is officially the Borden Light Poker Run. 22 years in the running now for this very successful event, which is now presented by Cigarette Racing Team. And in addition to cigarettes, well, there's all makes and models here and a great representation from Outer Limits Power Boats, which we, of course, know is located just south of here in Bristol, Rhode Island. Uh, but check out this impressive fleet. So far, have you seen a cat yet? No, you haven't, have you? <laughs> a strong uh, presence of performance V-bottoms seems to be the way uh, of life around here. And that was a big departure from so many of the other poker runs that we've attended. Oh, there's a cat. Yep. Uh, and that was unique to this board and light poker run and I really enjoyed being here you know partly for that reason but also for the hospitality of the owners uh, of the event and the marina Mike and Nicole Lund who have been really the backbone for this event all these years Mike pulls in all his car and truck buddies and they have a great display on land you can't really see it but this display is actually out on a wooden pier uh, right over top of the water and then of course the boats right there on the backdrop on both sides and they really go out of their way here to extend a, a really big welcome mat to anybody who who arrives, especially us. You know, we got into town the, the night before on Thursday, and within an hour we were whisked off with uh, Mike and his group to go have dinner at a Portuguese restaurant uh, in Fall River, Mass. And it looks as though the boats are on the move now. What I didn't say, and I'll remind everybody, we did have a captain's meeting uh, and breakfast earlier uh, in the day, so everyone is now congregating at the dock and getting fired up for the run today, which I do believe is about a 65 to 70 mile run altogether with a, a wide variety of checkpoints, which there's no way I know how to find a single one of them. So fortunately, I'm gonna be able to tag along with some of the other boats today uh, and uh, just kind of like be a participant really and uh, let the local guys show us around. That of course was the world's fastest uh, V-bottom uh, owned by Jason Bourne at Outer Limits. And here is Buddy Thomas with his uh, Outer Limits catamaran that has been on the Key West Poker Run a few times. Uh, but you can see now everybody's getting fired up, but look at the staff representation. This was, I really got blown away by this. See those, those pretty ladies uh, sitting out in the bow of each boat with the line ready. Uh, Mike and Nicole had hired an incredible staff and it wasn't just for the poker run, but these are their regular summer staff of high school and college kids that come down here and hustle dock lines uh, for tips. And they all do such a great job. Uh, the entire staff was so accommodating here at this marina. And that was just one item of many on the punch list uh, that really made this a fun poker run in so many ways for all of us. 
I couldn't help but notice that there were so many boats here on this event that we've seen before on Florida Powerboat Club events. So this seems to be a common thread. At a lot of these poker runs we visit around the country, we're arriving and seeing as many as 20 or 30 boats that have been to South Florida before doing our events. And that just makes it kind of a special uh, experience for us when we arrive and see all these familiar faces and boats uh, here at the dock. And some rare one-off uh, models as well. This Outer Limits Center Console, uh, the only one that has ever been or probably will ever be built. So yes, indeed, a truly custom-built boat. And let's check out the power package. I know it's going to be Mercury Racing, count them, one, two, and three Mercury Racing 450Rs. And here is a flashback to the 90s, uh, this 30-foot uh, Sonic uh, on the run that, uh, of course, Sonic played a big part in the role of getting FPC started back in the early 90s. And the original owner and founder of Sonic, Jay Ross, well, he's my next-door neighbor in Pompano Beach. Who could believe that? And a very grand send-off it was with hundreds of people down on the docks uh, at the Tipsy Seagull and around uh, the Borden Light Marina in general. A lot of fan base coming down here for this annual event that's been running for over 20 years. And, of course, again, it is a big charity event they raise money for Make-A-Wish Foundation. So now the boats are milling at the start, which is, oh, about 100 yards off the dock. <laughs> so you got to love that, too, that literally you come out of the marina and you just putt-putt couple hundred yards and you sit there underneath the 195 uh, causeway aka the charles m braga jr memorial bridge well that's a landmark here in fall river mass and that's where all the boats are going to congregate and get ready for this start today glad we got the drone flying i got tyler jones on board uh, came with us for the trip as well as my son maxwell and uh, they've done a great job of helping me to capture some some really memorable photo and video of this event, which had been on our bucket list for many, many years. And uh, having Cigarette Racing Team come here to be the presenting sponsor was a really big thing for all of us. And uh, we, we've also got some of the Cigarette staff with us. We've got Kimberly Sewell riding on board our Flight 1130 Top Gun today. Uh, and overall, really just a perfect weather. And what appears to be an exciting day ahead for all of us uh, to be out here boating with so many of our friends that have joined us in Florida on a lot of our FPC events. Well, this is an old fashioned traditional poker run start, guys. Uh, counting down five, four, and three, two, and one, and they're off. Uh, a straight start from a dead stop, and away they go, guys, heading down through Mount Hope Bay, and we're actually leaving now. Massachusetts and heading towards Rhode Island and we're going to be kind of uh, weaving in between a, a really I would call a complicated uh, series of islands and you, you really have to have local knowledge around here to, to, to know where you're going and that was why it was kind of like uh, hurry up guys let's get this thing on plane and find somebody to follow so that's exactly what we did after we landed the drone. <laughs> And making our way through the poker run course, I think this is the farthest away checkpoint at Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, actually the same town where the airport is that we flew into. So this is, was a pretty good run to get up here. Uh, but now one by one coming in for our poker cards. I believe a total of five poker run checkpoints on the run today. And I must say that I've really been blown away by the scenery. Um, yeah, that kind of scenery too, but what I was talking about, the, the real scenery. Uh, and, and really just the quality of the boats. I mean, there's some high performance hardware here at this event, and I'm still baffled by how many performance V-bottoms there are here. Not to mention Outer Limits, uh, who apparently own the waterways here. And that's probably because they're the only manufacturer who are based right here. We got a chance to 
Uh, make part of that Friday outing, uh, the Outer Limits Factory Tour, thanks to Danny Kleitz, who uh, rolled out the red carpet and welcomed us there. So let's just flash back, if we could quickly, to Friday morning when we stopped in at Outer Limits in Bristol, Rhode Island, and got a tour of the factory that we've always wanted to visit. Uh, it's been on my bucket list for years and years. Remember that Outer Limits started way back about the same time that the Florida Powerboat Club did in the mid-90s uh, when the founder, Michael Fiore, uh, decided to start building his own line of performance boats. And, of course, uh, Tyler the Drone Freak got, to, got there and put the drone up immediately. But here's Danny Kleitz uh, giving us this cool tour. John Wittenberger, Jr. with us. Uh, of course, we all know who he is now, um, Director of Marine Operations for FPC. But here we are in the OL factory never been here before and this was so cool there wasn't a lot of activity going on here on this friday morning but it was interesting to see just how many new projects uh, were on the drying boards and were getting laid up here uh, as well as just a lot of classic outer limits boats that we've seen before some of them in person and some of them just in photos uh, some really unique stuff too like this 52 uh, which is owned by a gentleman from hong kong and he has just registered for the Key West Poker Run. And of course, there was a lot of jaw-dropping uh, stuff here on the floor, you know, not to mention a handful of these Mercury Racing 1550s just sitting there on pallets uh, waiting to go into some boats and some really rare one-off boats as well. Uh, even that red Outer Limits over there, I saw that and I thought it was a cool boat. It turns out that boat has just been purchased by Octavio Valdivia, one of our club members from Georgia, who also owns a, a 51 foot outer limits uh, and a concept center console so he's adding to his fleet but you could just walk around and look at these cool paint jobs and some of these unique boats there's buddy's uh, cat that's the one we saw in the water earlier in the show but it was a fantastic tour and uh, a credit to the late michael fiore who we lost back in 2014 and again uh, to joe scro who we lost in 2017 and i truly felt the presence of both michael and joe here at the factory on this Friday morning. And back out on the Poker Run course, uh, joining a number of teams here now, we can see the Flight 1130 Cigarette uh, teaming up with some more boats as we roll up into the docks here at this next marina. Uh, I'm sorry I don't recall all of the names of the checkpoints, but all I know is that uh, they were very well staffed at all of the locations. So clearly this isn't their first rodeo. You know, Mike and Nicole Lund have been running this event for a very long time. And they seem to have this course mapped out uh, quite logistically in a way that uh, everyone gets a lot of boating in over about a two hour period. Now, we didn't start until 12.30. So we all had breakfast uh, earlier at the docks, but now it's 12.30. And you're going to run till about 2.30 or 3 and then make your way back to Borden Light Marina. Uh, that's the plan. Some people like to stop and have lunch somewhere. But what Michael and Nicole have decided to do is not really make uh, the poker run have its own lunch stop because you know what happens then, right? Well, we all do. We've been on poker runs and it turns into a party and then bad things could happen. So this was the ideal format for their circumstances. And if I can expand on that thought, the circumstances are that they own the marina. Uh, they own the Tipsy Seagull restaurant, and they own this Pier 52 restaurant out on the pier. So, you know, why would you go and eat dock and eat anywhere else when you can come back to the dock, tie your boat up for the night, and proceed to the party? And that's really what I liked about this format. And, of course, Mike and Nicole have everything just set up so perfectly. Their staff uh, is always there to greet you and entertain you, and they treat the poker room people like we're royalty. And that's what makes this a very, very special event. And I'm so glad that we were finally able to make it after all these years. And of course, thanks to Cigarette Racing Team for stepping up as the presenting sponsor of the Borden Light Poker Run. Sunday now and yet another beautiful day and we are here to go boating and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, teamed up with a bunch of other locals who wanted to go out and play, so today's destination is going to be Block Island. We're now making our way back through the Poker Run course in uh, Mount Hope Bay, but our destination is going to be out into the open waters of Block Island Sound. Uh, there's the Borden Light uh, Lighthouse, uh, obviously the namesake for our event here this weekend. Uh, but today for me is exciting because we're going out really into the ocean to another destination on my bucket list, Block Island. Well, we're on 
on day two of the uh, Board and Light Poker Run. Poker Run was a great day yesterday. We wrapped things up uh, late Saturday with a, with a great party, but uh, the weather just kept getting better, and we decided to take a fun run today, now arriving here at Block Island. A uh, total of five boats today, uh, a couple of Outer Limits, a couple of cigarettes, and even a Sonic joined us. Uh, it's about a 25-mile ride across from the entrance uh, by Newport Harbor. Uh, but the day is beautiful, you know, the temperatures are probably tipping the 80s, but right now, you couldn't have asked for a better day. A little bit bumpy coming across, but that's just the no normal water for, the, for this area. Block Island now, our destination, you can see all the dinghies along the beach behind me. And we're now turning into Block Island Harbor, and you can see there's hundreds and hundreds of boats uh, on anchor here. Mostly sailboats, a lot of yachts and cruisers. Just got flipped off by a couple of sailboats and uh, and a guy fishing, but I guess that's the way they do things around here. Power boats not very welcome, uh, but otherwise a beautiful day here on the water as we reach Block Island in the middle of Long Island Sound uh, and making the adventure just uh, perfect in every way. Here's some great shots uh, again. Now this is considered to be the old harbor, and of course there's a new harbor on the other side of the island. But old harbor uh, was our destination because. Once again, Mike Lunn, he pulled a few strings, he knew somebody here, and he was able to get us uh, some docking, uh, rafting up on this big sea ray. Uh, and uh, they really monitor things closely here, the dock master does. So you can't just come in here and raft up. You better be prepared to pay the piper, and that's what we did. Uh, we were registered transient visitors here, even with this raft up. Uh, but then we got out onto the pier. Um, we had a couple of drinks here on the pier, and then we made our way into town. Uh, and across the island uh, but just hanging out here and just getting this feeling of being at block island uh, which is just height of the season right now remember we're the first weekend of august uh, but we quickly got into a taxi cab because we wanted to go over and check out one of the hot spots on the island and i really didn't know what to expect but you can see that this island is jammed and it is vibrant and remember that a lot of the visitors are day trippers here so they're on their big day they come in on a ferry boat uh, from connecticut or from new york and they are just here for one reason only and that is to have some fun make the best out of their day here on block island others are staying for days at a time because there are so many guest lodges and hotels and of course, well, look at all the big boats. Well, we know there's a lot of people staying on those yachts and those uh, sport fishing boats in front of us. But we move things over to the other side. Now, this is what they call New Harbor. And we went to a place called Ballard's. Uh, and Ballard's is a beach bar. And it is probably the hottest spot on the island. And this place was going off today with the red light band entertaining thousands of visitors. Oh, hey, did I tell you guys best lobster roll ever at Ballard's? Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, Tyler, back out on the drone here on this uh, huge jetty, which is essentially the barrier to protect the new harbor. And we're back now in the old harbor, putt-putting our way out. Just happened to find out that one of our good friends from South Florida, uh, Tim Gallagher from Performance Boat Center, who basically went off sailing with his family, well, it turns out he is at anchor here in the harbor, and there he is in his big catamaran sailboat. Uh, got the family on board, so we found out where he was, and we came over to say hi and did a little circle, and he didn't even flip us off, you know? He treated us like the good old power boaters that we are. But it was kind of exciting to run into Tim and Aaron and their son, and I have to really say that what Tim's doing really illustrates uh, stepping outside the box and taking his family out on a major uh, sailing voyage or cruise for months upon months. And remember, they are more than about 1,200 miles from home now in South Florida being up here at Block Island. So uh, thumbs up to Tim. Nice to see him. And what a fantastic uh, day trip we had here out to Block Island with our boating friends. And I certainly hope that we can do it again soon. And a little bit of high-speed fun as we throttle up the cigarette Flight 1130 uh, back into Mount Hope Bay. And uh, thanks to all my friends for bringing us out here to Block Island for this fun run. Uh, but heading back now to Fall River, Mass, and we're going to settle the cigarette in for the night. 
And special thanks to our buddies who let us join them, of course, Mike and Nicole Lund, uh, Peter Burke, and uh, George Palilio uh, with the Outer Limits there with the outboards. And indeed, he was the one who sold me my cigarette seven years ago. Monday morning, uh, we arrived to very peaceful Board and Light Marina. Not quite as crazy as it was over the weekend with the poker run being there. And before we fly out, we've got to get the Flight 1130 Top Gun situated. Uh, and with thanks to the staff here at Board and Light Marina, uh, their crane operator had the slings ready for us. So they lifted us out uh, of the marina and put us on the trailer. But it wasn't just that simple. They, you know, didn't just like send us off. No. They stuck around and lent us the hose and uh, helped us out with washing the boat down. And it was this kind of first class service that made it so enjoyable for us to be here. And the idea was to leave the boat in town now for a couple of days. Uh, not to mention that George Polilio uh, had a custom uh, car shop and we had some issues with the F-350 that needed tires so George took care of that. So between the boat and getting it lifted out in between George taking the truck and getting the tires uh, redone uh, for us and uh, leaving it at a local dealership and then a group of guys uh, from the Burlington Vermont based Lake Champlain poker run well they invited us to come and join them up at their event so the plan was then to have the boat shipped up to Vermont from here of course from there Palmetto Yacht Management was going to take the boat all the way from Vermont uh, to Kentucky uh, which is where our next poker run is going to be a month later in September. Well, guys, that's a wrap for the Borden Light Poker Run presented by Cigarette Racing Team, our first time there, and we absolutely loved it. So let's jump ahead now four weeks as we continue the tour. Miss Jackie has got her Lake Cumberland Poker Run captain's bag and her agenda for the weekend. We've just arrived flying directly from Fort Lauderdale to Nashville where we rendezvoused with our driver from Palmetto Yacht Transportation. We picked up the truck and the trailer and the cigarette and brought it the rest of the way and put it in here at Jamestown, Kentucky. And now we are out enjoying Lake Cumberland, which is going to be a three-day format for us uh, Friday through Sunday. And obviously a very stark change uh, to the backdrop here, uh, moving away from the coastal regions and salt water to these Army Corps reservoirs. Of course, Lake Cumberland being one of the largest uh, in this area in the heart of Kentucky. If you were to look at Lake Cumberland on a map, it looks like a long river, uh, much the same way Lake of the Ozarks and even Lake Lanier uh, appear from above. So that's the difference to the backdrop here. Of course, the one thing we can all appreciate, it's going to be a fresh water weekend, guys. and not going to have to flush those motors at the end of the poker run. Now we're gonna move uh, pretty fast and furious through the day here, and I'm gonna explain what's different about the Lake Cumberland Poker Run than from many other events. Uh, what's different is that the poker card checkpoints open up on Friday, and they're open on Saturday as well. And here we are with Jackie and I at Marina Rowena, uh, which is one of the checkpoints. So what we're essentially doing is, she and I are mapping out the entire poker run course on our own on Friday. A lot of people aren't going to do the course until Saturday, but we wanted to do the course and get all of our uh, checkpoints covered on Friday so that we could have a little more time to play on Saturday. So it was a good strategy, and you know we really got our program down. We got an early start. I think we were the first people to pull up to the first checkpoint in Jamestown. And throughout the day, we continued to be the first arrivals at a lot of the places. They weren't even really ready for us. Uh, we said, hey, we're here for the poker run. They're like, oh, okay, well, um, walk down that dock and go in that office and go tell the girl at the counter that you're here for the poker run and she'll punch your card. Well, <laughs> that's what was kind of cool about this event. It was almost like a treasure hunt. Uh, obviously, it's hard to get lost on this lake because it's a lake that goes from one end to the other. and But it does have a lot of tricky little switchbacks and uh, waterways that you know they they all kind of look the same so sometimes you'll turn down the wrong one by accident and um, no no harm no foul you just you know pull the boat off plane grab your poker run course map and take a peek at the gps and generally speaking you're going to figure it out but the best thing to do is follow somebody around and we did a little bit of that 
course, like all the other poker runs, we ran into a lot of our friends. I think this is Ron Paul with his Nortec 390 Sport. Quad Mercury Racing 400Rs. And here's Mike Liardi and his family on their uh, Cigarette 38 Top Gun that they just acquired recently over at Lake of the Ozarks. And this is, I believe, Joe and Jen Grulick and their Nortec 390. So uh, kind of running into a lot of our fellow FPC members and making it kind of fun, really, for all of us. But I think that Jackie and I look at it very differently because now we're here as participants. And uh, that's really what, uh, you know, changes the whole vibe for us. And, um, it, you know, we want to be good participants, too. So we're going to try to make it to every single checkpoint and, you know, prove to people that we came here to go boating, and that's what we're going to do. So this, I believe, was our last checkpoint, and it was a restaurant, and that's where we had lunch. And it was only about 1 o'clock, and it was still a whole afternoon ahead of us. So we had done nine of the ten checkpoints. With one left to go, we decided to head to Harmon Creek uh, because everyone was telling us, well, that's where the party was. So, you know me, like, I'm all about a party, and I'll go check it out. And, boy, lo and behold, this wasn't just a party. This was an amazing, like, gauntlet of hundreds and hundreds of boats, thousands of people on a Friday afternoon, I might add. So it's about 2 o'clock on Friday afternoon. And these guys, most of them have been here all morning. Uh, and maybe even some of them came in the night before because they wanted to have a good spot. But can you imagine that these people will come in here and probably spend 24 hours, 48 hours? You know, obviously on a houseboat, that's not a big deal because that's what they're made to do. But there's a lot of people that just come in here and tie up for hours and hours and that's it <laughs> they're here and this party is insane and somebody even decided to drop some green dye into the water no that's not a bad camera uh, lens it's really green water and there's some more of our FPC friends uh, Donald and Don Haddon in their concept 4400 dirty little secrets although they are from South Carolina they are Lake Cumberland veterans they do this event every year so they've got the big program going uh, with a giant houseboat rented at State Dock. And they've even got a, a place where they can put the concept right in alongside the houseboat. So they've really got a rock star program put together, uh, as have a lot of other teams. Of course, uh, there's Chris and Shelby Mattingly in their Midnight Express 43. Uh, they're local to the area, so this is their annual pilgrimage that they're here at this event every year. Well, we cannot show you all of the video that we got here on this little gauntlet run, but you get the idea. Uh, we made our pass and headed back to State Docks because we wanted to get settled in for the Friday evening festivities. But I would have to say that this Friday was just one of the best days of boating that we had had in a very long time. Uh, and uh, now settled in back at the State Dock. <laughs> this is the rock star central here, guys. This is where if you want to be in the middle of the party, you get yourself a houseboat at State Dock. You notice how she hesitates after I give her like a camera instruction? She's like, oh, not again, really? Okay, I'll wave, hurry up, get it over with. <laughs> oh, that's what happens when you're on a boat all day Friday, and now it's gonna be again all day Saturday. But a great day ahead. We joined up with some other uh, club members, and this time we're gonna run around as a small pack, you know, kind of like the Hells Angels on the water, and starting things off at Marina Rowena, where we decided that we were going to have lunch. So we caught up with Devin Wozencraft and the Grulix and uh, Mike Liardi and his crew on the cigarette. And kind of a fun day because we were hitting a lot of the other places that were not necessarily on the Poker Run course map, but were popular attractions here on Lake Cumberland. One of them was 76 Falls. And I remember coming here like 20 years ago uh, when this was the big hangout, but it seems like all the boats have moved over to Harmon Creek. Uh, but here's a video from Devin Wozencraft on his skater, his 30 skater. But look, uh, guys, even us grown-ups like to have fun. So he started the whole thing off by going under 76 Falls, and then we're like, okay, I want to do that. <laughs> so everybody started doing it. So yeah, we, uh, we went under 76 Falls with the cigarette, 
and uh, I just about hit the wall, you know, but I didn't, thank God, and it would have been ugly. Watch how close I come here. But this is the fun part because I, I'm going through behind the falls, and I, I don't know if Jackie realized that we're about to get wet. But we're not going to get wet because of an accident. We're getting wet because I actually forced the boat over that way. So that was fun for me. And thanks to Devin Wozencraft uh, for getting us this cool shot as we uh, went through 76 Falls for our very first time. So that's just a few highlights of our Saturday, which was really a much more casual agenda. Uh, we only had one checkpoint to hit. So as we now depart 76 Falls, we run into a bunch of boaters who were just out here enjoying the afternoon. Well, we would love to hang out, guys, but we're heading back to State Dock to play out our poker cards. And back at the dock, over 100 Poker Run teams played out their cards for this prestigious first place trophy, along with the $5,000 prize money that came with it. And look at this lucky team that won. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Thanks to Jackie's uh, lucky card pulling, we managed to win with a full house. And uh, congratulations to the other teams who won second and third place. So thanks to the entire team at Suntax for putting on a fun event and to all of the participants who rolled out the red carpet to make us feel welcome. And as for that $5,000 prize money, well, of course, we donated it back to the local charity, which was uh, Folds of Honor, uh, designating $2,500 of the $5,000 to them. And I asked that the organization at Suntex to come up with their choice of a children's charity here in town. And we have yet to have heard back as to who they selected or if they made the donation. We asked for donation receipts. We have yet to receive them. To any of you who attend this event, I would urge you to get a commitment from the organizers uh, when you do donate your prize money back uh, to just make sure that that money does go in the right place and they give you some kind of a confirmation because I have yet to get mine. Day three here at Lake Cumberland as we look over State Dock. A little bit overcast today, probably expecting a little bit of rain, uh, but we still have plans to get out on the waters and we're going to be joining our friends from the Performance Boat Center. I uh, was happy to see Brett and the team down here. They had one of the houseboats rented and today they're out on this 40-foot uh, sensation. And we have found another location for us to go and enjoy lunch and celebrate our last day here on the waters of Lake Cumberland. Uh, I forget the name of the place we went, but it was one of the Lake Cumberland checkpoints. So we made a note of it and decided to go back. The other thing we want to do is go up one of these winding rivers uh, that is very scenic and burn off some fuel. Uh, so that's our plan today. And uh, the goal is to empty the boat of all the fuel, get it back on the trailer. So meanwhile, uh, let's enjoy the ride. Well, we had a successful ride and I did accomplish my mission of running the boat completely out of fuel. So thanks to Brett and the boys. <laughs> yep, that's right guys. I got about a half a mile tow back to state docks, uh, right up to the gas dock. So I squirted about 20 gallons in the tanks and uh, putt putted back to the boat ramp. And that pretty much wraps up our three days of excitement here at the Lake Cumberland Poker Run hosted at state dock in Jamestown, Kentucky. And our next stop on the summer tour is the Pirates of Lanier Poker Run, uh, just north of Atlanta on Lake Lanier. Very excited to be returning to this event. Well, we arrived a couple days early, so we left the boat at Lake Lanier Islands on a trailer, uh, and it was safe to leave it there. And then we headed down to Atlanta, where we caught up with club members Octavio and Karen Valdivia, who live in the Atlanta area and have a body shop in Union City, which is over by the airport. So we got together and had dinner with them. And we got uh, our ride in the Mega Rex. That's right. It's basically a Raptor on steroids and uh, one of Octavio's many, many toys. Imagine driving this around in like downtown Atlanta. Well, he does. <laughs> and But he pulls it up to the valet and gets out and hands the guys the keys. It's like, 
uh, okay, I'm going to park this. <laughs> but he's a real car guy, as well as being a performance boat enthusiast. Octavio has a cool body shop called Unitech Auto Body in Uniondale. And one of the highlights for us was arriving just as uh, our T-Bird, our new 56 T-Bird, uh, was coming in to be painted. And Octavio's crew was going to take the car now for the next couple of weeks, really, or maybe a, up to a month, and strip it down and clean it up and make it look beautiful uh, because it's been a big project for us for about two years and it needs that little extra TLC. Uh, back at the Lanier Islands Resort, we got the boat in the water now as we're just getting ready now on Thursday evening. And now you know why they call it Sunset Cove. Uh, and that's where we're going to be docking the Flight 1130 cigarette all weekend. And we've got activities planned for Friday and for Saturday here on Lake Lanier. But, of course, the big day is Saturday for the Pirates of Lanier Poker Run, something that we haven't uh, been to or seen for several years. It kind of went away um, after, oh, I think 2016 or 17. Of course, there was a bad accident, and uh, I think we just decided it was time to hang it up for a while. Very nice to see one of the original founders of this event, uh, John Woodruff, uh, from Atlanta area, obviously very active with the performance boating community, especially the Florida Powerboat Club. Uh, and he's a big donor here at tonight's uh, Friday night party, uh, which is a fundraising party, among other things. Uh, there's John and all his uh, entourage uh, sitting right up front. They commenced the evening by announcing they had made a big donation to the Supercat Fest a month earlier at Lake of the Ozarks. But then they followed that up with three separate donations to the Lake Lanier Charities, totaling uh, almost $100,000. The charity auction was a blast. Uh, Tom Manshouse on the left, Don Doty on the right, shared the hobby horse uh, auction item, which was, I think, six hobby horses. So they each added three horsepower to their boats. And I got a chance to wander down to the docks and saw everybody had their boats lit up so brilliantly with all these underwater lights going. And uh, it was kind of fun to walk around the docks and check out all the boats uh, that we haven't seen in a while. And a lot of them had come just from Lake Cumberland. So seems to me that everybody is sort of on the same circuit this summer. And the new September dates for Pirates of Lanier appeared to be a big hit. All right, we've got the whole crew on board here. Uh, Flight 1130 uh, at uh, Margaritaville, Lake Lanier, Saturday morning. Nice day, a little cloudy, a little overcast, but that's good. That's going to take the heat off. I uh, got the helicopter pulling in right now. About a dozen boats here on the dock waiting to pull out. Looks like we're going to run with a small group today. Not a very big course. Uh, we have, I think, seven checkpoints all together uh, here on Lake Lanier. Nice to be back in Lanier for the Pirates of Lanier 2023. A great organization and a lot of boats and a lot of fun this weekend. Let's go. And when I mentioned uh, the size of the course, I think it's probably maybe 50 miles to do the whole course, but we thought we would and mix it up and go on the longer stretches at the very beginning instead of just kind of hitting the nearest checkpoints we decided to do a long run down the lake to get the first one uh, way up at the other end of the lake in Dink Gainesville Marina and I believe that was orchestrated by Craig Ackerman who's one of our locals here on the lake with this 39 MTI so uh, we're kind of following Craig and I just hope I can keep up because he's running a 39 MTI with 450s, so you know that's going to be a tough one. Tom Men's House with his uh, four-engine Midnight Express 37. So we had a good run up the lake um, and I believe northbound, but now we're at Gainesville Marina. So we actually went to the other end of the course. Uh, we've got this uh, festive crew on the dock here with all their cool outfits. Uh, this is kind of the vibe you get here at Pirates of Lanier. Everybody's here to have fun. Everyone's got costumes and outfits on and it's just really a fun poker run everywhere you go. And just uh, back out on the course now, uh, heading southbound really, I believe now, Port Royal is one of the big checkpoints. Uh, it's a big marina here with a nice restaurant and look at those cool jet ski docks. They really have this place laid out nicely and you can see all of the spectators that are here on the docks everywhere you go. And really for me, that's what makes these poker runs so much fun. It just seems like everybody comes out uh, to pay tribute to all of the teams that are here supporting the event and of course it is a charity event so 
Uh, that's something about Pirates of Lanier that in some way separates it from a lot of other events. Let me hear Arr! And it was a fun day had by all. I hate to cut it short because we really did hit a lot of other fun checkpoints, but fast forward to the evening festivities where we all played out our hands and congratulations to Josh Kirkland and his first mate Colleen for winning the poker run and our fearless poker run organizer who did a great job Sheridan Renfro Bazemore on the right and uh, congratulations to the entire team for putting on a great event and I think the only reason that Josh won the award because he's the only guy who could lift up that monster trophy one hand <laughs> So a fun weekend had by all here at the Pirates of Lanier Poker Run. Glad to have this event back, and we would highly recommend it to anyone that's coming up again September of 2024. Well, guys, we have gone way over our normal time, but that wraps up uh, Episode 3 with feature coverage of our 2023 Summer Tour, sponsored by Mercury Racing and featuring the Flight 1130 Cigarette Top Gun, powered by Mercury Racing 565s. And we are back on the road now from Georgia, heading straight to the Emerald Coast for the annual Emerald Coast Powerboat Week presented by the Florida Powerboat Club and hosted at the luxurious Emerald Grand Resort on Destin Harbor. It's all just around the corner, guys, and we've got 100 teams registered, so you can't afford to miss that one. You know what to do, guys. Make sure you pound that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll get an update every time a new episode is released here on Florida Powerboat Club's YouTube channel now approaching 40,000 loyal subscribers. Thanks guys. Be sure to check out the website at flpowerboat.com for all of the details about upcoming poker run events as well as membership information. You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club and you can follow us on Twitter and on these Instagram pages. Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for your wonderful comments on our page and you guys know who you are and I really do appreciate that. But if you have questions or comments you want to direct to me specifically, please use my personal email at stu at flpowerboat.com. I check that daily, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We're going to sign off for now. This is Stu Jones along with our producer, Ryan McCoy, in the Pompano Beach studio. Have fun out there, guys. Be safe on the waterways. Wear your life jackets when the time is right, and always respect your fellow boaters. Bye for now.